Hi everyone, I'm Leon Thomas Lewick. Here's your political news roundup for Friday, July 26th. If Russia returns accused national security whistleblower Edward Snowden to the United States, he will not be tortured and will not face the death penalty. That's the promise from Attorney General Eric Holder in a letter to Russia's Minister of Justice. The U.S. is trying to force Snowden's return to face charges of theft and espionage for disclosing the National Security Agency's practice of spying on Americans. Snowden remains trapped in Russia while he waits for transportation to one of several Latin American countries offering him asylum. Holder said the letter refutes Snowden's rationale for temporarily requesting asylum in Russia. It said Snowden would have all the protections of the U.S. civilian court system if he were to be returned. The political and civil rights firestorm ignited by Snowden's disclosures is still burning in Congress. Yesterday, the House of Representatives narrowly defeated a bill that would have removed funding from the program that collects metadata from digital communications. At least a half dozen other proposals are on the table in Congress, including one requiring the government to show specifically why, why certain records are relevant to an investigation, and one making public the rulings of the secretive FISA court that now almost routinely approves NSA requests for surveillance. The vote against dropping the funding for metadata collection was 205 to 217. There are signals that Iran is willing to have direct talks with the United States about its nuclear program. The signals come from Iraq's Prime Minister al-Maliki. He passed along word from Iran that the country's incoming president would be serious about discussions with the U.S. The Iraq Prime Minister offered to facilitate the talks. There has been no comment on the issue from the State Department. The Obama administration has been at odds with Iran, saying the country would not be allowed to develop a nuclear weapon and suggesting the use of military force to prevent one. And you'll recall a couple of years ago, then International Monetary Fund head Dominique Strauss-Kahn resigned after allegations of a sexual assault against a New York City hotel matron. Well, today, the 64-year-old Strauss-Kahn, who is also the former finance minister of France, is facing charges in France of aggravated pimping. The charges stem from a sex party he attended that involves prostitutes. If he's found guilty, Strauss-Kahn would face up to 10 years in prison and fines of up to $2 million. That's your political news roundup for Friday, July 26th. I'm Leon Thomas Lewick. Stay logged on to rttnews.com for the latest political, economic, and stock market news all day long.